Hi everyone, Cardi Buzz is back in 2023. I apologize for the weeks of silence. I had to take a break as I've been going through some transitions at home and work. And here we are back again for a new season of Cardio Buzz. Cardio Buzz is your weekly podcast for cardiology updates created by Dr. Hussein Hishmat, professor of cardiology and interventional cardiologist. We review the most recent and relevant cardiology articles. We explore the current trends in cardiology, from the latest technology to the impact of emerging treatments. We also interview cardiologists, researchers, and other related professionals in the field. Cardiologists believe that cholesterol is the cause of atherosclerosis, and we've been chasing LDL cholesterol as the culprit lipoprotein. We kept lowering the target levels of LDL until we get close to eliminating LDL from the blood. And despite this war on LDL cholesterol, we still see atherosclerosis progression and new cardiovascular events. Of course, it could be that most patients are not achieving their LDL target, but it could also be that other lipoproteins are causing atherosclerosis, but we haven't started targeting them yet. And one of these molecules is lipoprotein little a. Now we understand its relation with cardiovascular disease, and we may probably see new therapies coming to tackle this molecule. So in this episode, we will discuss lipoprotein little a. We will answer some questions. What is it composed of? What evidence links it to atherosclerosis? Is it just a risk factor or a cause for atherosclerosis? Is it a cause for other cardiac conditions? When should we measure lipoprotein little a? What are the normal blood values? And what should we do about the elevated blood levels? So please join us in this episode of CardioBuzz. The first question, what is lipoprotein little a? Plasma lipoproteins contain various proportions of four major elements, cholesterol, triglycerides, phospholipids, and specific proteins called apoproteins. Lipoprotein little a is one of these lipoproteins. It's secreted by the liver. Lipoprotein A is composed of one molecule of LDL particle containing ApoB100. And it also has another unique highly polymorphic glycoprotein that's called apoprotein little a. Why do we keep saying little little a? Because the small a is important to distinguish lipoprotein little a from apolipoprotein A1, ApoA1, which is the structural protein of high density lipoprotein. The little a gives this protein its peculiar features. A characteristic feature of the little a is the presence of loop-like structures. They are called Kringle repeat. These loops resemble plasminogen. The loops come in different forms and sizes, small, medium, and large. This variation in size is a unique phenomenon to lipoprotein little a, as other lipoproteins usually have constant masses. Lipoprotein little a is secreted by the liver, as we said. The smaller size of lipoprotein little a are easier secreted by the liver, which leads to higher concentrations of lipoprotein little a, and this might have an impact on cardiovascular risk. The blood levels are determined almost entirely by genetics, with a very limited impact from the environment, from the diet, from the lifestyle. What evidence link lipoprotein little a to cardiovascular disease? Observational and genetic evidence convincingly demonstrate that high lipoprotein little a concentration is an independent risk factor for atherosclerotic disease, cardiovascular mortality, and all-cause mortality in men and in women across different ethnic groups. The relationship between lipoprotein little a concentration and these outcomes is continuous. Elevated levels are associated with myocardial infarction. Extreme elevations are associated with ischemic stroke and with heart failure. Very high levels of lipoprotein A identify individuals with a lifetime risk of cardiovascular disease equivalent to that of untreated heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia. Elevation of lipoprotein little a compounds the cardiovascular risk in different risk categories, of course with greater augmentation in higher risk categories. Lipoprotein little a is also an independent risk factor for disease even in patients who are treated with statins and in patients with levels of LDL less than 50 mg per cent. In children, lipoprotein little a levels are also associated with an increased risk of recurrent arterial ischemic strokes. Is it a causal relation for atherosclerotic disease or just a risk factor? The 
relation between elevated lipoprotein A and atherosclerotic disease is a causal relation. This is based on genetic evidence, Mendelian randomization. We can discuss Mendelian randomization in a separate episode, but simply stated, genetic variants that are associated with elevated lipoprotein little a are more common in individuals with cardiovascular events than in healthy individuals. In contrast, variants associated with a marked reduction in lipoprotein A are protective against cardiovascular events. So the relation, similar to LDL, is causal. Is it a cause of other cardiac conditions? Yes, elevated lipoprotein little a is also associated with calcification of the aortic valve, especially in relatively young, healthy individuals between the age of 45 and 54 years, in whom the risk is increased threefold when lipoprotein little a is above the 80th percentile. High lipoprotein A may promote faster progression of aortic stenosis, culminating in earlier aortic valve replacement or death. Again, the relation is causal, based on Mendelian randomization studies. On the other hand, we now know that elevated lipoprotein little a is not a risk factor for venous thromboembolism. Also, epidemiologic studies have shown that very low levels of lipoprotein A are associated with an increased risk of type 2 diabetes mellitus, prediabetes, and insulin resistance. What is the mechanism behind this relation to atherosclerosis and aortic stenosis? Lipoprotein A has pro-inflammatory and pro-atherosclerotic properties, which may partly relate to oxidized phospholipids carried by lipoprotein little a. We thought of a potential role in a pro-thrombotic and antifibrinolytic activity, but this remained unproven. Elevated lipoprotein little a may induce the expression of inflammatory and calcification genes in vascular and valvular cells, resulting in the progression of aortic valve disease. Okay, so when should we measure lipoprotein little a? What are the normal and the abnormal values? Lipoprotein little a should be measured at least once in a lifetime in adults, preferably in the first lipid profile encounter. This will help identify those with high cardiovascular risk. Again, lipoprotein A concentrations are predominantly determined by genetics more than any other lipoprotein. The consensus panel by the European Atherosclerosis Society, and we'll place a link in the description, suggests that the cutoffs of lipoprotein little a, less than 30 mg per deciliter or 75 nanomole per liter, are the normal values. More than 50 mg per deciliter or more than 125 nanomole per liter means elevated levels, and there is an interim gray zone which is between 30 and 50 milligrams per deciliter. It's important to remember that there is wide variability in the assays. Most assays incorporate polyclonal antibodies. They may even mix LDL and lipoprotein A, therefore potentially underestimate or overestimate lipoprotein A levels depending on the presence of small or large isoforms respectively. Laboratories should include in the reports the assay name to allow for tracking of results in different follow-up situations. The European Atherosclerosis Society panel does not recommend using a standard factor to convert between milligrams per deciliter and nanomole per liter because the assays vary extensively between different labs. Then, what should we do if the levels are high? Any specific treatment? Well, elevated levels of lipoprotein little a would classify patients into a higher risk category for atherosclerotic events. Therefore, personalized management of LDL cholesterol, blood pressure, glucose, and lifestyle factors, taking into account the cardiovascular risk and the untreated lipoprotein A level is recommended. For example, if we want to mitigate the increased risk of events, which is caused by higher lipoprotein little A levels, then we need to lower LDL cholesterol by an extra 0.5 millimole per liter. For example, if the patient's target LDL is, let's say, 55 mg per deciliter without lipoprotein little a elevation, then the target would be 35 mg per deciliter when lipoprotein little a is above 120 nanomole per liter. We may even need to go lower down if we start treatment later in life than earlier. PCSK9 inhibitors also reduce lipoprotein A by an average 25%. However, we don't know whether this reduction in lipoprotein little a 
reduces the cardiovascular events. Therefore, PCSK9 inhibitors are not recommended just for the sake of lowering lipoprotein little a. Also, niacin can reduce lipoprotein little a, but it's not recommended given the lack of clinical benefit in two cardiovascular outcome trials. We have data from the ASPRI trial that looked at elevated lipoprotein little a values in the elderly, and they found that in this particular group of elderly patients with elevated lipoprotein little a, aspirin might have a beneficial role, even for primary prevention. Do we have therapies that target specifically lipoprotein little a? Yes, in fact, there are novel antisense and small interfering RNA treatments that target lipoprotein little a production in the liver and they lower the lipoprotein little a concentration. In early trials, we saw a decrease of 80% in lipoprotein little a levels, but we're still waiting for trials that show that reduction of lipoprotein A with these agents will translate into reduction of cardiovascular events. That's great. Can we please summarize our understanding of this molecule and how to manage it? Yes, so to recap, lipoprotein little a is a molecule that's produced by the liver. It's similar in structure to LDL with a peculiar protein that gives this molecule wide variability in shape. Elevated lipoprotein A is a causal for atherosclerotic disease, recurrent strokes, and aortic calcification. It's not a risk factor for venous thromboembolism. Lipoprotein little a levels are determined genetically with minimal impact from lifestyle. Normal values are less than 30 mg per deciliter. Elevated values are more than 50 mg per deciliter. The levels should not be converted from milligram to millimole or vice versa. The levels should be measured once in a lifetime. The excess risk of lipoprotein little a elevation can be mitigated by additional LDL lowering and tighter cardiovascular risk factor control PCSK9 inhibitors reduce the level by 25%, but they're still not approved for this indication. Aspirin may be beneficial as primary prevention in elderly individuals with genetic variants that elevate the levels of lipoprotein little a. Specific therapies are being developed to lower the levels of lipoprotein little a. They really work, but we're still not sure of their benefits in terms of cardiovascular risk protection. Thank you for listening to Cardio Buzz. We are excited to share all of this medical, scientific, and practical knowledge with you. So, stay tuned for all the updates and subscribe to the show. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Feel free to share the episode in your social media accounts to spread the knowledge and science. Wishing you all a healthy and safe year.